I'm here with uh, Dr. Fernando Ona, who is the inaugural Wink Fellow, and June Keener Wink, who is obviously the namesake of our fellowship, along with Walter Wink. And we are pleased to uh, have everybody show up tonight to welcome uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Tabitha Holly with us, and we'll go get to her in a few minutes. I just first wanted to welcome in uh, to have a conversation. It's been a year in coming. It's when I first met Fernando. He was very eager to get to Massachusetts to sit down with June uh, and to, uh, after all of his years of studying Walter and June's work to sit down and talk for a few minutes about Dr. Wink and June's work uh, and, and, and their work together for over many years and, and how it's kind of working out now. We've had a great year with Fernando. So I just want to say hello to them and ask them to have this begin a short conversation with us to talk a little bit, say hello, and maybe go over the years. So welcome, Fernando and June, and I'll hand it over to you for about 15 or 20 minutes. Thank you so much and welcome tonight uh, to our FOR community and those who are joining us on this Facebook Live. Um, we also wanna just uh, welcome uh, Pastor Tabitha Holly, uh, who's gonna be the next Walter and Walter Wink and June Keener Wink fellow. Um, tonight I'm here with June Keener Wink and I'm just so thankful that I'm in her presence finally. And it's been a wonderful um, day and evening um, that I've been spending here um, at the home of June and Walter. Um, and it's just been a wonderful gift to um, hear the stories and witness the sacredness of this place, of, of where both Walter and June not only made a home, but also practiced their theology, their theology of the powers, um, their theology and their work is reflected in this, this beautiful place that I'm um, here with uh, June here. Um, tonight, I thought we would, we have spent, you know, the past few months talking about Walter's work, um, and and read through the powers that be. And I invite those who are here with us in this Facebook Live to revisit the powers trilogy, um, naming, unmasking, and engaging with the powers, um, as well as the other works of, of Dr. Walter Wink. But tonight, I wanted to spend um, time engaging with June about her work, um, because it's been inspiring for me um, to integrate this um, into uh, this larger sort of reasons why I sought out this fellowship and why I've been so honored to be part of this fellowship. Um, and in a way, I wanted to discuss uh, June's theology of movement. Um, we've been talking a lot today about um, dance, about the arts, about ceramics and pottery, about colors, about being present with um, our bodies. Um, and I had the opportunity to, to move and groove a little bit earlier today. Um, uh, but I wanted to talk with our community about um, this theology of movement. And what does it mean for you, June, um, when I say this theology? Because I, I feel like we talk about the theology of the powers, and I believe that the, this theology of the movement that you've, you've written, that you've moved with, that you've lived, um, is animated um, in, in this theology of the powers. And what I feel is the transformative work of engaging with the powers. Um, you um, said in one of your pieces, um, which is entitled Shedding the Snakeskin, Movement, Art, and Spirituality, back in the day, which I was telling June is so relevant now, you had said that, you know, you were getting in touch with your God-given powers through movement. And you characterize this as, as you use the Hebrew word nefesh. And I'm, I'm hoping you can share with us what you mean by that and how this connects to being in the body and being present with the body. It's a word that we found that kind of incorporates everything that both of Walter and I do. Um, nefesh has different 
definitions, but the way we used it was it, it meant body, mind, spirit, but also any part of that, like my little finger could be a nefesh, or my whole being can be a nefesh, my soul could be a nefesh. So we, we kind of took that word and used it as something that would convey to others that we're trying to be holistic. We're trying to be synchronistic, holistic, um, find within each person their own fears, their own joys, their own uh, struggling to be human in a way. And through the body, which is one of the places we have neglected in the past, um, we can we can take away all the all the curtains and really find out who we are when we start moving when we start now it doesn't mean they have to have a great body it doesn't mean that you can't be in a wheelchair it doesn't mean anything like that it simply means that we are bodily human beings at this point and so we need to embrace embrace that make friends with our bodies we need to be um our bodies need to be our big, our best friends. And if we go back to that central idea, sometimes you can even go to the mirror and look in the mirror and just say, I love you. And um, that's helpful when no one else is telling you that they love you because you have to, because you can love yourself. And uh, you want to feel as you move the spirit within you, you want to feel your own rhythm under uh, uh, inner rhythm uh, and not so much following the outer rhythm, which is okay. But first of all, find your own rhythm. I love how this, how you, you frame finding your rhythm within the body and within this concept of, or this word nefesh, right? That, that integrates body, soul, spirit, that really deeply integrates all of this together in practice. It's not just thinking through, but we're actually like moving, like actually moving. I, if, if you saw June earlier today, she was actually moving to music while she was cooking. And I was just, I, it was, it was for me to witness the power of reconnecting, right? That that it is being aware of our body, spirit, right? Mind, emotion, feeling with our bodies, like so connected. Um, and that that to walk toward, you know, the, and not to be afraid of when our bodies are being challenged or when we're wrestling with with deep emotions and how that plays out in our bodies and. I, 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 in one of the pieces, um, June, you talk about how being at the potter's wheel, mm -hmm. right? I think you say the body moves, the, the clay moves, they move together, right? But that pottery wheel was also your prayer wheel. And that in a way, your spirit is deeply connected to you in front of this wheel, right? Manifesting, molding, making something out of clay. And that your affective place, like how you feel is also connected to that. I think you were, you would relate in this piece how you had, someone had asked you, a good friend of you asked uh, to, to make something out of clay. And there was anger with you. There's some like anger and, and you were talking about how being present with your body with that anger, with your spirit, right? Being at that wheel, there was in that process being, there, there was transformation there. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what that was like in sort of a little bit of that context? I was having a problem with a certain individual and um, yet I had to make this piece of pottery for her. Um, I didn't want to do it, and I also was a professional potter. I I needed to do it, so I I sat and uh, worked with the clay, worked with the 
and the process of why I was in this sort of moody way. And because you can't really center a piece of clay unless your whole body, mind, and spirit is in that. Um, you have to be centered. You have to know that it's not just a physical thing. It's part of centering your whole heart, your whole per person. So I worked with it, and then I kind of let it go, if I remember. I remember the place I was. I was in a, my studio then was in a barn in the Berkshires, and I was looking out over the meadow and kind of forgot about it as I was um, creating, letting the wheel do the work. Um, and suddenly, and sort of suddenly, uh, the whole thing came together, and um and I was just, it was like my mood changed. I began to understand. I began to let go. I began to be another person. I began to be transformed. And, um, and that's probably part of the prayer that goes on within us when we let go is something else takes over. And you don't have to really do it. You just have to be, allow it to be done. What I love about it, and, and you write in this, and, and, and not only did you allow it to be done, you also write, and I'm going to quote what June wrote um, in this piece. Um, I can tell you that on, on a day, I began, on that day, I began to open myself up to this woman's feelings and, I took, and to look at her from every perspective. My, my darkness turned to freedom, my frustration to peace. I'd hardly been aware of making them, these chalices, right? Mm -hmm. But suddenly I was released, invited as it were, to take part in Christ's body and blood once again. From that time on, the Eucharist had meaning for me. Um, and I, what I appreciate about this, this is why I, 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 I feel like this has been so profoundly um, I feel like I'm awakening to this theology of movement that you often are, you, this is your everyday life. And when I read these pieces, when I've listened to the stories that you've told me, that you've gifted to me, um, I realized that it wasn't just an attunement with your body, but there was a we-ness in this. Like there was an attunement to your, this, this person, this other human being in your life, right? And that even though there may have been anger, frustration, challenge, you're wrestling with what it is to be human, what you and Walter have talked about over and over again, mm -hmm. that you allowed yourself to be open to that attunement. That, and it wasn't just your mind, right? You weren't thinking it through, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just your heart. It wasn't just your emotions or your feelings, but it was all of them together, Right, that allowed your body almost to move in a way to create these chalices, which I, I absolutely, I adore that. I actually appreciate that. And that's why I was, you know, this, this idea that this motion and this movement, there's, there's a, it's like a prayer. It's this, it's almost like what Walter talks about and in terms of inter intercessory prayer, right? Is that we can also use our bodies in this movement of prayer, mm -hmm. you know? Right. I think being present isn't always necessary because something is present all around us. You call, you could call it the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can name it mm -hmm. or you can't name it, but you feel it and, 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 and it's something else that takes over. You, you've never been more present when you think you're not present sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I appreciate um, we all, we, you know, in 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 these times where we're deeply challenged by a lot of things that are around us. Um, there's been talk about how are we present with ourselves and with each other, and then you know you're inviting me at least to shift, you know, mm -hmm. how I understand presencing. Mm -hmm. it, that presencing for me now is not only awareness but a deeper attunement. Mm -hmm. like it's here mm -hmm. like god is with us mm -hmm. walter's with us you're here i'm here we're together here and our community is here and that is presence right yes. and that's what i've appreciated by and that that 
in that presence, my body, your body, our bodies together, I, we, that's our connectivity in this space, in this physical realm um, that unites us with this spiritual space. Right? And I, I appreciate it. I've appreciated listening to that and understanding how sacramental that is too. You know, we have, we discussed earlier um, and I, I mentioned to, to June that I, fe I feel that this movement is not just movement, but there is a sacredness to this movement, you know? Um, and it's this, what, what June <laughs> wrote in another piece called The Invisible Force. Could you talk about that a little bit, this, this invisible force, right? Um, well, I think it's the dance itself. We don't realize, or the movement. I think the word dance scares a lot of people if they're not trained or if they haven't had a dance lesson. That doesn't matter. Just the fact that we lose ourselves in some kind of physical movement, but it can never be just physical because if we're totally present, our whole mind is involved, our spirit is involved. And so it's kind of like we said, or I said about being present, you're present and not present. You're forcing, you're not forcing, but there's a force within you that, uh, is actually changing you. And I, when I first started moving, when I first went to dance classes, I was scared to death because I was this kind of uptight evangelical woman. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I got, and I wanted to move, but it was really scary. And then I, I started with some direction of, um, of course, but as soon as I got into the feeling of freedom, I, I had this enormous change that said, and I didn't think I had a God. And I feel God all over. I'm, I feel like I am the God or I am the goddess. Or the goddess is within me, but it changed me so much that uh, I, I was a, 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 a I was uh, amazed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was totally amazed. And transformed, it feels like, you know, and I, I actually want to, I hope I could share this with everyone. Um, this is a drawing that June did. Uh, and she talks in this, in both Invisible Force and in Shedding the Snake Skin, um, how she, this, this first drawing is of this upright woman. Um, but through the process of being in this sacred, this theology of movement, how that upright woman, right, becomes liberal because of that presence saying that is, that is God within and God around. Um, and, and that to me has been, in a way, the cornerstone of your theology of movement, mm -hmm. um, which I've appreciated. So, so I know we um, don't have a lot of time, but I just wanted to share with our community a little bit of how I've been thinking about and wrestling with what June has, has told me in her stories and in her experience, but in her own theology, right? Um, that for me has animated Dr. Wing's theology as well. I um, mean, how both of these theologies, she talks about um, the, this Hebrew word, right? Body, mind, spirit, soul, emotion, nefesh, right? Um, how this is an integrated approach to what I consider the theology of the powers um, and how what we've spent together these past few months, it, it's not an end, right? We continue evolving with um, this work. And I am looking forward to hearing how um, Pastor Tabitha, uh, who is our new fellow, um, will take this theology of both movement and the theology of the powers and the work of Walter and June Keener Wink together. So thank you, June, for your insights tonight. Thank you so much, June and Fernando. It's great. And, and I just want to uh, say that just, just scratching the surface of that, it just sounds like there's an awful lot we could really explore going forward. And I just want to comment that we've been, we started this fellowship during the pandemic. Uh, and it's a minor miracle to me and, and something I really want to thank Fernando and June and, and all of our four members who showed up month after month and then in, in, in between for other conversations. 
uh, for our book clubs, and et cetera. Um, it's been a real gift to be around people that are committed and interested in engaging so deeply in these thoughts and, and uh, works. So um, thank you so much. And Fernando, we've always thought about this as being a family affair. So um, while the, the fellowship year is, is changed for you uh, and we're moving on, um, we really hope uh, we've, we've come up with so many great ideas and, and so much energy around you. We hope we can engage that. I know, I think June probably feels the same way. Very much so. It's really brutal. It's, I'm really thrilled you guys are together. So great to be with you. I want to now bring on with a drum roll, uh, Pastor Tabitha Holly. Pastor Tabitha Holly is a graduate of Spelman College and Union Theological Seminary. She is this upcoming year, starting really now, uh, the Wink Fellow for the year. Uh, she's a Black queer feminist pastor of a church in the South Bronx. She has Southern rural roots and is aiming to engage in work that shifts the economic and lived realities of her people who participate in the U.S. project of war and mass incarceration. She seeks to transform hearts and minds through popular and political education on state-sanctioned and intercommunal violence. So welcome, Pastor Tabitha. So good to be with you. I, I think we'll have no shortage of things to talk about, but I wanted to say hello and please um, talk a little bit with uh, with June and Fernando and, and please share a little bit about your, your thoughts about moving forward, et cetera. Thank you all so much. I am just in gratitude uh, to, to FOR and to just the incredible, just the incredible work that Fernando has been doing. Um, I am just in awe. I want to just name how I kind of came into this space and um, just to kind of clarify why I'm here, what I'm interested in doing. Um, and because I, I also have questions actually for for June um, as we think about how I can use uh, this next year. Um, and so uh, as my bio kind of uh, mentioned, I am from the rural south, I'm from a really small town, just three hours south of Atlanta. And I actually am here now. Uh, and uh, I will just say that um, for me. And for my people, uh, the forces of violence um, were particularly strong in my in my upbringing, um, and and also I would just say, um, you know, the forces of violence were were very present for for folks that I that I knew and I loved, uh, particularly white supremacist violence, and so. Um, when we think about uh, the powers that be and we think about um, just the incredible work of Walter Wink, for me, um, again, as a Black queer feminist from the rural South, um, I want to think about how we can make um, Walter Wink's work practical um, and how we can make it real and how we can think about what does it mean uh, for that work to touch the ground and for it to be uh, with the people. And so um, I came to seminary. I, I, um, I'm home now. I think I said I'm, I'm, I'm at actually in my the in the house that I grew up in. Um, and so, which means I've had the opportunity to go through papers and look back at my uh, seminary application and look back at, you know, my entrance uh, essay. And one of the things that I wrote in my essay, and I, sometimes I go back to it, um, was that it feels very important to me uh, to kind of think about uh, transformative education. Uh, it, it feels important to me to think about how do we take uh, how do we take uh, theological language, the heavy union uh, language, and how do we make it accessible and how do we make it real for people who are being recruited uh, by the military, right? What does it mean to take um, this high theological language at times and make it real for people who are being uh, recruited by prisons and by jails in, in small towns, in big cities? What does it mean to think about uh, folks who are being recruited into uh, what is a war project? What is an imperialist project um, in this country? Uh, what does it mean to think and to wrestle with, uh, you know, in, in a certain sense, the least of these? Um, and how do we get, how do we get, um, how do we think about you know, we're getting our people outside of that system. Uh, and so uh, that that was one of the reasons why I went to seminaries. I wanted to think about uh, the language. I want to think about James Cone and Walter Wink. And I want to think about, you know, all of these um, amazing New Testament scholars thinking about, you know, critiquing in empire. How do we how do we bring this into some of these these small towns and how do we bring this into uh, into churches where there might even be uh, a lot of fundamentalist theology? 
right? Fundamentalist theology that actually uh, favors war, right? That favors a particular kind of violence. Um, and so that, that, that actually explains a lot about how I came into seminary. Um, and so uh, I got to seminary, think a lot of things changed in, in my life in seminary. And, and I would just say that I found myself even more in, in, in the practical theology field, right? It's like, how do I get into the pulpit and how do I make a good point in the pulpit uh, about fighting violence, right? About standing against violence. And how do I, how do I get good at that? How do I hone in on that particular skill, right? Of language. Um, and, and then I was like, okay, so practical theology is great. You know, the preaching and the worship and the liturgy is really, really nice. I can create a whole lot of anti-empire language, right? You know, but what happens when a group of people uh, are, are together at Bible study, right? And it's time to deal with the text. It's time to, to open up the word, the living word, and be able to discuss it and think about what is relevant to our lives. And so I, um, I found out about the work of Walter Wink um, because I decided to do my field work at United Methodist Women, which is now United Women of Faith. And I had the incredible opportunity to work with just an amazing group of uh, folks that were doing transformative education, that were working with, with women, that were working with people all across this country and just doing some amazing, you know, transformative Bible studies, right? Like who would think that a Bible study can change uh, the hearts and the minds of people uh, who are groomed in a way to think about, about war and empire um, in, in a positive light, right? So I think, you know, I learned about Walter Wink while I was doing that, that field work, right? And so I think that for me, I, I, want to think about the practical and then I also uh, in my fellowship year and I, I want to be in conversation with organizers and folks on the ground I want to be in conversation with folks who are veterans and who have chosen the side of peace I want to be in conversation with uh, organizers young organizers that are thinking about what are strategic ways that we can get more young people uh, into the work of peace, right? So these, that's the kind of work that I'm, that I'm looking to do. Um, and, and I just, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm grateful that you all uh, want me to be here. Uh, I'm interested in um, the relevance of this conversation in the Bronx, because that is where I work. That is where I pastor. That is where I live. That is where the forces of violence are particularly strong. Uh, our people are being policed at, at the subway station. Our people are being policed walking down the street. Um, and, and I think that, th that there's a particular thing that is happening in New York City that needs to be interrogated. Um, and, and I think that it has everything to do with violence. I think it has everything to do with the forces and it has everything to do with the powers, right? And so, um, yeah, I'm just in this conversation about you know anti-war organizing and in a sense, even, you know, we put, you know, we, we got, we have to end this, this policing thing. We really have to rethink about public safety. We have to be able to make the connection between militarization abroad. And we also have to think about militarization at home. Right. And so I, I think that a lot of my work and my life is really committed to making things real for the folks that are affected uh, by the violence. And so I will stop there. I, what I really want to know, if I can ask a question uh, for June and then maybe um, Fernando can also elaborate on this is um, how, you know, you're thinking about movement. You did an amazing job just ex expanding on movement and this call to be embodied. I'm just so grateful. I'm a part of a very embodied church, um, pastor of New Day Church in the North Bronx. We are an embodied group of people. We do, I mean, like we do all kinds of healing circles and we're just, we're really embodied at my church. Um, but I, I, I wanted to ask, how have you used the method of embodiment in the teaching? right in the workshops like in the lessons um and I, we know that you all have traveled extensively you know throughout parts of the world uh where you know where the forces of violence were the forces of violence right so I, i'm curious about you know how did that look and how did that feel and um and what came out of that for you and like how did you like 
yeah, like what was that like? That that's what I'm really curious about. Um, just just as a starter, um, if that's a good way to kind of begin this conversation. Thank you all for having me, and and I just look forward to this conversation. Oh, welcome, Pastor Tabitha. I'm gonna have June answer first. Um, uh, your brilliant question. I just want to say also um, a deep welcome from all of us here at FOR. We're really excited uh, to witness what you've just said. I love this practical theology and and how it's animating um, your experience um, and how not only in the pulpit but in our communities um, to transform them. So. Have you, Tabitha, uh, seen, and I'm sure you have, uh, Transforming Bible Study? That book can transform a whole congregation. <laughs> if you take those, um, take those Bible studies, and what we added to that was my part, which was movement, but also I did a lot of the um, the. For lack, of a, for lack of a better word, the exercises, uh, and Walter would I, and I would do them together. But I think they're all transformative. There may be new things that have come up since then, but it kind of, if, have you tried any of those with your congregation? <laughs> I think that's what I'm doing in this year. Um, reach in that, in that top drawer there. Open that uh, show, show her. Uh, <laughs> these are these are Walter's questions for Bible studies. Uh, all of all of these um, cards, and I have a number of cards just like this for movement and dance that go with the Bible studies. However, we never tried to link them up, but this movement is to uh, tone the body, not tone it like a, like, a, like a professional athlete, but more tone us for the spirit is open, our bodies are open, our minds are open, we're not afraid anymore. Um, I feel that without that, we wouldn't have been able to do a lot of the work that we would have done, even with people who are a little hesitant about it. And I know that in South Africa, I was more hesitant to do more body work or whatever we want to call it, movement dance, because I knew that they also had a culture that was developed from way back, way before I came on the scene. And um, and it was like, I don't want to break what they're doing. I don't want to intrude and say this is better. I just want to add to if it's helpful. And if it isn't, I need to know that sign that, that uh, to, bat, to, 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 to be aware, to be conscious all the time. And to try to, you know, your congregation, um, to know what their fears are. But a lot of my work was to try to get people to love their own bodies, to really be friends with their own selves, and um, to accept who they are body-wise. And if, if you can accept that, sometimes you can accept other parts of yourself. Um, even now, if I do something I'm glad that I remembered or did, I give myself a pat on the back. And I say, good job, June, you know, or I look in the mirror and I say, I love you. And just these little things to embrace people in what they already are and have, instead of trying to bring in something new that they make them feel like they don't, they aren't enough, or we're all growing, we're all learning, we're all trying to be the best we can, but we need to, along the way, accept who we are. And also, you know, and to add to that is that as in my experience, it's also to recognize um, sort of the how many of our bodies have been dehumanized um, and many of our bodies have have been inscribed with a different kind of script that is not our own. Um, and to recognize that, 
there are people amongst us that are not only dehumanized, but are being actively eliminated um, by, you know, a lot of forces of possession, right, that are that their bodies are on the line and are being not only eliminated, but completely forgotten. And that that is inscribed on other members of that community. Um, and June was telling me earlier, it's this, how do we, it's almost, how do you walk toward that um, and recognize there's this faith, right? Walter wrote in um, the third trilogy, I always, I always uh, quote that, you know, you, you walk into the, faith is, ha is walking into the waters before they part. Um, it is to recognize that in that space of darkness, right? That we can, we can reclaim, reconnect and re-engage with our bodies even if they've been dehumanized. Right. And that we can remember what June was saying, like that, you know, we can take many different strategies to come into that space. Um, if we are with present with ourselves, with the spirit and with our communities. Right. Tabitha, you, you spoke so beautifully about how you want to engage with a practical theology that takes what I think is both June and Walter's work. Um, and animates it in a space of an absolute extinction of a people, right? An active force of violence, right? Where the powers have been pos are possessing our institutions, our policies, our places, right? And in a way, this is what June talks about, this invisible force, right? This, this movement, this theology of movement that allows us right, to walk toward that right, in a way that does no harm to us, right? But instead, right, transforms us in this process, right? We don't know what the outcome is, right? Tabitha, I, Pastor Tabitha, I'm, I believe in the redemption, right? <laughs> but in the here and now, right? Um, in the space that we all collectively together, right, recognize the redeem the redemption of the powers, right, that have been fallen, right. You know, Ethan and I, Ethan, who's also on this call, uh, were um, witness to Reverend Dr. Barber uh, at the Moral March in Washington this past weekend, um, and it was so powerful to witness how. Even the, it's actually the rejected stone, right? The rejected stones, right? All of us collectively who've been dehumanized, right? Who are suffering, right? And continue to suffer from the strict violence. Tabitha, this is what make, which, which inspires me is that you are coming to this and coming into a fellowship, right? That is animating your theology, right? that is actually transforming all of us. And I'm so thankful for how you are taking the Winx work, right? And actually practically, right, moving forward in a space of sheer, sheer dehumanization, right? To actually transform it, right? To transform it. And I'm thankful for that, Pastor Tabitha. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for witnessing you both, June and I, right? We can't wait to hear you preach. <laughs> um, because it is not only the words at a pulpit, but it's actually an embodied action that transform what women as theologians often say, making a way out of no way, right? Making a way out of no way, right? we can actually redeem fallen powers. I want to say too that um, somehow if art can be brought in, if after you preach, this, this is just flying off on a rainbow, but uh, if you had crayons paints or something in the back of your church or something with paper and said to people, invite them to go use some color. What came out of, not to interpret what you said, 
but how they felt put down on a piece of paper with color. Color is so beautifully transformative. And it, it, it's, it's like dance, you have to, don't, or movement, you don't have to be a dancer or movement, you just do it. And you just pick up, and if, if I were close to you, I would give you a box of cray pods that we used everywhere we went, and no one wants them anymore. <laughs> but they're, they're lovely. Cray pods are just wonderful to work with. So it's just an idea, the fine little corners, you could put that paper and those things out and say, just have fun with it, you know, make it joyful. Yeah. Right. Thank you all so much. Just thank you all so much for elaborating on that. I just want to say before I, you know, before I stop, I just, um, there are two things that I, that I wanted to just name, you know, you think about people who in the world are dehumanized and people who are uh, particularly disembodied due to the forces of oppression. And for me, what came up for me in, in, in what you were saying, uh, June and Fernando both is reclamation. It's reclamation, like, you know, and it, it, because it's, a, it's one conversation, uh, you know, to, to think about the redemption of the powers, but to think about the redemption of oneself and one's own body to think about the reclamation of one's own self is to be able to honor um, that that was taken away and that, you know, it's like, I I'm going to take that back. I'm actually going to get that back. Like that is, that is really, that is truly revolutionary to say, I'm going to reclaim feeling. I'm going to reclaim uh, all the things uh, that that empire has tried to steal from me. It belongs to me. I, I, that's what came up for me in, in this conversation around the body and particularly thinking about, you know, I think my ancestors and, and you all, you know, people who have just been uh, who have just been taught to distance themselves from 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 their own bodies, um, if, if not due to, you know, the forces of violence, even Christianity itself. Right. Particularly fundamentalist theology uh, that tells people to kind of separate the, the flesh from the spirit. Right. Um, and so. And thinking about just the reclamation is just a powerful thing to think about it. And I think also I just wanted to expound on this art piece and how amazing it is to be able to think about how we can use art and how we can use crayons because we are at a place in this country and in this world uh, where there are no words. I am, I, I am becoming bereft. I am becoming tired of using words. Yep because I'm tired of saying the same thing over and over and over again. I, I listen to myself. I've listened to myself over the last few years and I'm saying, I, I just sound like a broken record. Mm -hmm. I need another methodology. I desperately need another methodology. And I think that the people also need another methodology because we are running out of words. And so I, I just want to say thank you for encouraging just embodiment and art and crayons and, and telling people to use color uh, to describe what it is that we feel. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessings on your journey, Pastor. Blessings on your journey. I, we are, I'm absolutely, we're, we're over the moon and overjoyed to witness your transformative power. So blessings to you as you navigate through this. So really powerful to look witness and hear you guys talk about this. And if, if nothing else, it says this next 12 months is going to be really exciting to see what you can do, uh, Pastor Tabitha. So thank you for that. I apologize. I did say the South Bronx and you corrected me before it's the North Bronx. Uh, and you have a very interesting congregation. So we're excited to, to see all this. So thank you so much for sharing that. And stay tuned to everybody watching to our to our members etc to stay tuned to see what pastor tabitha has planned and what we can what we can get going for you but in the meantime i'd like to bring on on board uh ethan vesely flad and anthony nicotera uh who are both the co-interim executive directors of the fellowship of reconciliation to sort of finalize this and and sort of bring us home so welcome gentlemen thank you so much bill i'll just begin uh by inviting us in the spirit of no words, just to take a moment to breathe. And I just wanna to bow to the divine, the sacred, alive 
in this moment in and through each of you. Thank you. In my role as interim co-executive director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation in this moment with my friend and brother and colleague, Ethan Besley Flad, I simply want to express our profound gratitude to Fernando, to June, <clears throat> to Tabitha, and to so many who made this Walter Wink and June Keener Wink Fellowship a reality. You are a deep, true, joyful inspiration for us all. There are too many to thank by name. Just simply want to say again how deeply grateful for the sacred way in which each of you this evening, Fernando, June, Tabitha, have brought this fellowship to life. It's been brought to life by so many supporters. Uh, and how we've been invited this evening and by uh, Fernando, June, and look forward to continuing to be invited by Tabitha to critically examine and, comp and confront the powers that be, to move together, to discern a third way and embody our struggle to be human together in the fierce urgency of now. Thank you. And I just wanna to say to those listening, if you are interested in finding out more about how you might support the fellowship, the Walter Wink, June Keener Wink Fellowship at FOR USA, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at our FOR USA offices and you can email us at winkfellowship at forusa.org. That's winkfellowship at forusa.org. I just would like to invite uh, Brother Ethan to share a few words. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony, and thank you all. Um, it is just uh, wonderful to be part of this um, emergent conversation, emergent engagement around liberation and reclamation, um, and to participate in this um, growing story um, and how uh, Walter's uh, continuing work and June, the work that you've done and continue to do continues to touch us in so many ways. As Fernando said, it was a great joy for me and a privilege to make what was practically my first work trip in two and a half years this past weekend and to join uh, Fernando and tens of thousands of others in Washington for the Poor People's Campaign um, National Call for Moral Revival and to be in that place and to offer our bodies in, in a form of movement and engagement for the sake of collective liberation, um, to pursue justice and mercy and uh, walking humbly with those of us who claim a creator to, to seek that in, in the company of others. And um, I, we've obviously seen that in such a brilliant and, a, and profound ways over the past year in the ways that Fernando has offered, uh, provided conversations public and, and, and with interlocutors. And we're looking forward Pastor Tabitha, to the ways that you uh, offer your gifts and your, I mean, you've been preaching <laughs> the last uh, 20 minutes or so in, in amazing ways and can't wait to um, hear and, and participate in that conversation with you um, and the, the work that you do for transformative education in this world. So um, uh, please join us in an ongoing way. I want to uh, close uh, my words by saying this is um, one of two, at the very least, uh, exciting debuts that's happening this week in our FOR community. We're also really just uh, so elated head over heels that um, we are naming a new uh, executive director for the Fellowship of Reconciliation USA. Um, it's Ariel Gold. Um, and we are so excited to tell you more about Ariel's work that she's been doing in this world and that she will be doing in the company of all of us uh, on screen right now and, and all of you um, who are watching and joining us from all the communities that you participate in in this country and around the world. So look forward to more from FOR about um, uh, a big uh, public announcement in the way that we're doing this. So we'll be doing some of that with Ariel. Um, but thank you so much, um, June, um, Fernando, Tabitha. Thank you for this time together. And Tabitha, would you offer us uh, a word to close us out? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, wherever you are, um, I encourage you uh, to bring attention to your body. 
and to breathe by taking a deep breath in and out. Mother God, Father God, God of many names, we are grateful. We are grateful that we get to be together. And God, we ask you for your strength. Oh, divine spirit, you know that we are tired, that we are frustrated, that we are angry at the current systems. And so we partner with you, oh God, divine spirit, to bring your kingdom to this earth. A just kingdom without violence, without war, without poverty. We partner with you to create that just kingdom. We know that you walk with us. You walk alongside us. Continue to give us the creativity to move with urgency and to move with clarity and to be present in our bodies, to be present to those that are around us. God be with us, spirit be with us, bless us and keep us. And I pray this in the many names of God. Amen. Ashe. Amen.